Hello and welcome to another special October edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. Before we get started, what are we drinking? The Demeter's Fate Russian Imperial Stout. Ooh, 8%? <laughs> yeah. Be feeling this later. Last year we tackled Halloween 5 for Season 5, so for Season 6 we'll continue tradition and tackle Halloween 6 and give it the trash or treasure treatment. Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers is directed by Joe Chappelle. No relation to Dave Chappelle. No, nah, sadly. <laughs> Imagine if Dave Chappelle directed a Halloween movie. <laughs> it actually would be fucking brilliant. Yeah, I think it would. This movie stars the man himself, Donald Pleasance, right? We don't need to go into what he's done. Paul Rudd is in this. We also don't need to go into what he's done. He's a big actor. This was one of his breakout roles. Mitchell Ryan is in this. He played Riker's dad in The Next Generation. Ambu Jitsu. <laughs> yeah, I remember playing the Ambu Jitsu. <laughs> and he's in Lethal Weapon. So Halloween 6 starts off six years later after the events of Halloween 5 see this weird room with all these candles and people in these robes and shit and Tommy Doyle is narrating saying it's been six years since the disappearance of Michael Myers and Jamie Lloyd after that fateful night of massacre at the police station. We see this girl who is Jamie Lloyd giving birth to this baby and these weird druids are like delivering the baby that man in black from the end of part five who broke Michael out of jail he takes the baby away. There's this midwife who kind of sympathizes with Jamie's cause here. She steals the baby back, gives it to Jamie, and shows her a way to escape. Michael Myers is there, he's all <laughs> yeah. following her, and she gets into a truck and drives off. Michael gets in another truck and yeah. starts trailing her. He can drive. Yeah, as we saw in the first movie and the fifth movie, he yeah. can drive. Yeah. We're reintroduced to Dr. Loomis. <laughs> yeah. He's enjoying his retirement, listening to the radio, and they're talking about the events of Halloween. Whatever happened to that that old Loomis guy? Yeah, is he dead? Is he dead? Yeah. He's not dead! He's very much retired! He's like barely alive <laughs> in this movie. He's just on death's fucking door. Speaking of death's door, he gets a knock at the door, and it's his old buddy from Smith's Grove, Dr. Wynn. Cheers to your retirement, Sam. By the way, would you like to come back and work at Smith's Grove? <laughs> What an asshole! They hear the radio, this call-in show, this girl calls in asking for help, begging for help, saying Michael Myers is chasing me, I need your help Dr. Loomis, if you're out there, I need you. It's Jamie! She's reached a phone at this bus station, Michael catches up to her at like this barn, takes her by surprise and throws her on this fucking threshing machine. Just before she dies, she tells him, you can't have the baby Michael. Get out the baby Michael. He goes to get the baby out of the truck, and it's just this roll of towels. We then get introduced to a grown-up Tommy Doyle from the first movie. <laughs> Tommy Doyle was the boy that Laurie Strode was babysitting way back in 1978. He's a grown man now, living in this boarding house. Yeah, like he's, doesn't he have a job or he's, anything? He's like... a bit of a recluse and a bit of a weirdo. He's like the town weirdo now. He's become like a Michael Myers fanatic. We also get introduced to the new Strode family in town, right? They've moved into the old Myers house because we learned that the Strodes, they couldn't sell the house, so he just moved his asshole brother into the house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this family is very dysfunctional right off the bat. The dad is super an asshole. He's all chopping down that sign on the lawn. <laughs> That's enough of this. Michael Myers bullshit! He's all wearing that robe and it's way too short. Yeah. It's all like his wife's robe. And it's super tight. See the curves of his ass when he turns around to walk away? He could have just pulled the sign out of the ground. He didn't need to take this hatchet to it. The dad is not happy that the daughter had to move back in, right? With the kid. With the damn kid, right? You and that little bastard, bastard of yours. yours. And he sees the mom slip her all this money. He's like, oh yeah, that's real good, Deborah. Here, on second thought, why don't you give, give her all her goddamn, goddamn money? <laughs> <laughs> Throwing all that money at her. She tells him, you're the only bastard I see here. And he slaps her. There's a knife at his belly, right? And it's the little boy, Danny. Danny is seeing visions of this man in black, right? And he's hearing voices. 
Tommy was listening in on this whole radio segment. And he deduces from what he heard that she was at this certain bus depot, right? He goes to the bus station and he ends up finding the baby. He takes the baby and he goes and he actually runs into Dr. Loomis at the hospital. Tommy Doyle! Yeah! <laughs> actually, Loomis has turned completely around. Yeah, he's and like, then he, like, he's like, oh, Dr. Loomis, well, you didn't even see his face? Yeah, how do you know? It could be just be some useless old man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he tells Dr. Loomis that he's got a theory about Michael Myers. Meet up with me later. Right? Loomis goes to the Strode house, he wants to warn the current family that Michael is gonna come back here. Gives the mother this wicked speech. This rage that's inside of him! Classic Loomis speech. <laughs> exactly. The mom actually phones the dad and he's all at work and everything. He's stressed <laughs> out. <laughs> she gives him shit about not telling them that this is the old Myers house. He's like, God damn it, Deborah! You're letting strangers into our house. What the hell are you doing over there? And he all pulls the bottle out and starts <laughs> drinking. Yeah. She goes to leave. Who gets into the house? Michael Myers, right? She starts getting into these sheets and everything that she hung up. And she turns around and Michael's there with that fucking hatchet. The same just... hatchet that, oh, that dad is using <laughs> to cut down that sign. And just wax her. The dad comes home and he's all pissed, drunk, <laughs> he's got the shirts all untucked. The lights go out, so he goes downstairs and the washing machine is on. The power's out, so how is the machine on? Yeah, it's, it's kind of strange. He opens it up and there's all these bloody sheets. Michael Myers is there and Michael stabs him and then rams him into like the circuit box. <laughs> <laughs> He starts getting all electrocuted and the, the basement's all glowing yeah, and flashing. So <laughs> and his head explodes. <laughs> this fucking blows up. Tommy takes care of and Danny back to his place and he tells him, well, it's not safe to be in the Myers house. He proceeds to tell her about what he thinks is going on with Michael Myers and this whole thorn theory, right? The, the theory about the stars aligning into the thorn symbol and yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And that's where we're gonna end the plot. So if you wanna see what happens with Tommy Doyle, Dr. Loomis, Kara, Danny, and this thorn theory, keep watching Halloween 6. So, Halloween 6, trash or treasure? <laughs> Let's start with the treasure as we always do. It does really feel like a Halloween movie, and that's, I think, it, it, it feels like it takes place during Halloween, during fall time. It looks like a Halloween movie, you know? Uh, lots of leaves, it's pumpkins, it's got a really good atmosphere to it, mm -hmm. a good vibe, a Halloween vibe. Yeah, and a lot of the sets, too, that they use, right, they're lit really nice. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of fog and mist, like in the beginning when Jamie's yeah. getting chase looks really cool yeah it is a good looking movie for sure that scene where that where that one guy gets his neck all yeah. broken <laughs> like it's like foggy and it's dark it feels like a cold halloween night you know and that's exactly how it should feel and it does feel like it takes place in the same universe as all the other halloween movies there's a lot of good callbacks to the first movie strode realty <laughs> like in the first movie and they tie that in like they're yeah. still trying to sell the house yeah yeah and it's the Maya house, yeah, right? Yeah, they're still trying to sell the Myers house. Mrs. Blankenship, they reference her in the first movie. You got Tommy Doyle, right, from the first movie. Yep. And a lot of the music too, right? The theme, they still keep the same theme throughout. The other melodies from the first Halloween movie are in this movie, mm -hmm. and it really makes it feel like a real Halloween movie. The characters are great in this movie, actually, and a lot of them stand out. One of the biggest standouts is the dad. The asshole the dad. <laughs> oh, fuck, is he ever an asshole. He's such an asshole that you actually kind of like him. You love to hate him. Yeah, exactly. Right? You love to hate this guy. <laughs> Loomis is another, of course, fantastic character. This is his last movie too, right? Right, yeah. And he kind of goes out on, on a bit of a bang in this movie, right? He's got the poignant dialogue. He's got that great speech. Yep, yeah, like he always does in all the Halloween movies. It's sad that, of course, Donald Pleasance died, but it's also kind of neat that his last movie was a Halloween movie. Yeah. The movies really put him on the map as like this iconic character. His involvement makes it feel like a Halloween movie. 
Every other Hall Halloween movie that came out after without Loomis lacks oh. that Donald Pleasant's presence. Yeah, so much so that yeah. they're always using him yeah. in certain ways, right? They have flashback flashbacks. Flashbacks or the dialogue, the fake Loomis talk yeah. in H2O or whatever. Yeah, fuck. Oh, it's like the, the later movies just cannot let go of Loomis because he has such an important role yeah. to play. Dr. Wynn is also a pretty good character in this, although he, he, I don't think he gets enough screen time, really. Still a good antagonist in this, right? He's right. kind of the bad guy. He's the man in black. Exactly. So... He's actually pretty good. Danny's actually pretty good. He's a little kid, right? Normally, little kids are not that great of actors. Yeah, yeah. But this kid actually does a good job. Yeah, especially at the end where he's really scared, where Michael is after them. Yeah. He's like, Mommy! And he's like cowering. And Yeah, you get yeah. pretty tense there. Yeah. He's not a great actor, but he's good <laughs> enough to get the job done. Mm. He doesn't wreck the movie like some child actors wreck fucking movies. Yeah. <laughs> the Shining, made-for-TV version. <laughs> yeah. It's good packing snow! It's good packing <laughs> snow! <laughs> Fucking little bastard. I also think it's neat that Tommy Doyle in this is almost becoming the new Loomis. Right. Because Loomis obviously is old, not many years left. Obviously, <laughs> you know, he died right after making this. But they really turn him into the new Loomis, the person who's like, yeah, Michael is evil, we gotta go fight him, I'm leading the charge, it's mm -hmm. my responsibility. Mm -hmm. That really becomes Tommy Doyle's job in this. I wish they would have pushed it more. Mm -hmm. It kind of is a passing of the torch. If H2O was a different movie, it could have been Tommy Doyle. Yep. You know, he is the new Loomis, he's the one fighting the evil. Yeah, they could have completely taken that and ran with yeah. it. Kills in this movie are actually quite good. The whole chase scene and death scene of Jamie, which is pretty damn good. Yeah. Like, it's a great way to open the fucking movie. And included in that scene is where he breaks that guy's neck. And yeah. it's great effects where you see the bone come out and everything. <laughs> yeah, it's good awesome. Kill. Hey, <laughs> get away from my truck. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> the way Jamie dies on that machine, like, that's yeah. pretty awesome. The mom, when she gets killed... I like how you don't see it, but you see the blood. The lead up to the kill is great. The chase yep. through all those those sheets. Again, the sheets are a hark back to the first movie. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And then you got the dad dying with his fucking head blowing up. Yeah. How can you get any better than That's that? That's a great death. It's <laughs> probably one of the best deaths in the whole fucking series. Yeah. Near the end when he's chasing Tommy and Kara and Danny and he <laughs> uses the guy's face to open up that gate. And like, <laughs> they then Michael goes in a crazy killing spree in the hospital. Kills everybody, all the nurses and doctors in that room is crazy. Good kills and high kill count in this movie. And another piece of treasure in this is they did not disregard all the other sequels. They did their best to take that whole man in black bullshit and the thorn sign that you see yeah. on Michael's wrist in part five and try to make sense of it and try to kind of tie up those loose ends. That leads us to the trash. <laughs> How they went about doing that. This whole thorn side plot. Not is, even side plot. Or, yeah, that's the, it's a huge part of the movie. The fact that it's even in here is a fucking disgrace, for one thing. It takes all the mystery and all the mystique and everything away from Michael. It also takes the burden off of Michael, because yeah. all he is is just a machine to be used. Yeah, just a pawn, just yeah. a puppet that they use. It's a cult that is the real bad guys in the whole thing. It's like, what? No! Other ways you could have solved the man in black thing. Yeah. He could have been operating by himself, just some crazy weirdo Guy. maniac who wanted to break Michael out. Introduced the whole fucking cult and like the stars align. Ridiculous. It really is fucking so stupid. Another piece of trash in this is they didn't get Danielle Harris to portray Jamie mm -hmm. in the beginning of the movie. She wanted to do it, but they didn't want to pay her a good enough wage for it. They wanted to pay her scale. And she's like, no, like, I'm a big part of this franchise. Yeah. And she is a big yes. part of the fucking franchise. Yep. Pay her the extra bucks and get her in there and make it fucking legit. And apparently she was actually really good friends with the girl they did hire mm -hmm. to play Jamie. The production company was not super happy, so they cut out a lot of this cult stuff. But in doing so, 
it makes the movie have so many plot yep. holes and so many loose ends that never really get tied up. For example, if you watch the theatrical cut, you have no clue what happens to Wynn, Wynn Dr. Yeah. Wynn. Yeah, he's just gone. He's just gone. Michael wipes out that whole operating room. Why? He's killing off his own cult. Yeah, that it makes no sense. Makes no sense. Another problem I have with this movie, and I have this with a lot of Halloween movies after part one, <laughs> is they show Michael too much. That's right. They show the mask too much. Like, he should be the shape. It desensitizes you from Michael Myers. He's no longer scary. You see him too much. It's another piece of trash for this movie is all the other music for this movie, right? This, all the background score. It's not the Halloween music. <laughs> yeah. The score is done by Alan Howarth, so you'd think that it would be good. Yeah. But he kind of shits the bed on this one. It's a little too contemporary <laughs> with all the, the guitars. Yeah, like, dream, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The fucking yeah. dive bombs. It's like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, I don't need electric guitar in a Halloween movie. And the whole subplot with this fucking radio DJ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, and that goes nowhere. Like, why, why is he there? He's just a, a body. He's all strung up in those trees. <laughs> That's actually a cool part. Yeah. Look, mommy, it's raining. Yeah. <laughs> so that brings us to the producer's cut. <laughs> yep. You didn't think we were gonna mention it, but we gotta <laughs> talk about the producer's cut. So the fact that the producer's cut pushes the whole cult thing even more so than the theatrical cut really pushes it fucking hard and even alludes that Michael is the father of the baby. So like, what did he rape? He must have raped. He raped his own 15-year-old niece. Like what? No, you, you, that's not it's Halloween. That's just fucking morbid. That's yeah. just sick. And what does that do to the character? What it's doing? It's not raping Jamie Lloyd. It's raping the Halloween. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what it's doing. It's going against everything the Halloween stands for: mystique and mystery and the ending. Like in, in the <laughs> producer's cut, the way they defeat Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> he, he all throws those rune things on the ground and all that. It just, just stops. <laughs> like, what? And that's how you beat Michael Myers by throwing some <laughs> fucking pebbles on the ground? Like, what the fuck kind of ending is that? All the things Michael Myers has been through, been stabbed in the eye, blown <laughs> up and burned how many times, and then these rocks just stomp him. <laughs> I like the way that they ended it in the theatrical cut with Loomis, right? Yeah. He goes back in here, now! Yeah. So you kind of assume that he, that Michael killed him. Yeah. In this, he sees that thorn symbol on his wrist, Yeah. and then that's why he's all, now! Now! What the fuck? Like, what kind of ending is that? So the producer's cut, I really dislike because it really pushes all that way too far. The theatrical cut is more of trying to be a traditional Halloween movie. So, is it trash or treasure? It's treasure. I've watched it, I don't know how many fucking times, yeah. right? Now that we're reviewing movies more and being a lot more stringent, I actually enjoyed the movie more this time around. Yeah. Because I started to really look at it with a critical eye and going, you know what? I maybe thought that that was garbage before, but I like it. Yeah, I, know, I, think it, I think it's treasure too. The theatrical cut yeah. is treasure. It was dealt a fucking bad hand. It had to clean up the mess that Halloween 5 left behind. It kind of succeeded, but when it boils down to it, it's a fun movie with yep. some good kills that continues the story. Looks like a Halloween movie. Exactly, like said, yeah. It know. looks and it feels like a Halloween yeah. movie. What do you guys think? <laughs> Halloween 6, trash or treasure? I'm sure a lot of you think it's trash, oh. and we're not going to argue with you. No, no. But this is our personal opinion. Until next time, <laughs> keep drinking.